All right, are you ready to do some problems? I know I am. Question number one. A project scheduled to be carried out over a single fiscal year has a budget of $12,600. So $12,600. Divided into 12 mo equal monthly allocations. At the end of the fourth month of that fiscal year, the total amount actually spent on the project was $4,580. $4,580. But how much was the project over its budget? So uh, you have to remember that the $12,600 was split over evenly over 12 months. So the first thing we want to do is figure out how much uh, was allocated for one month. We do that by dividing this number by this number. So what you have is 1 and 0, 5, 0, $1,050 going into one month. Oops. And they're saying that at the end of four months, this is what uh, actually the people that were working on the project uh, spent. And they're asking how much over budget did they get. So you take this uh, 1050 and you multiply it by 4 to find out how much they were supposed to spend. Oops, yes, 0, 5 times 4, 20, you get 2, 4. And so they were supposed to spend 4,200. They ended up spending 4580. Subtract the two numbers. And you get 380 as your answer. And that happens to be answer A. And that is also the correct answer. So uh, you'll see that these early problems are, are pretty easy. It's you know the official guide, they 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 do kind of us separate their problems in such a way that the, the harder problems are near the end. So um, these early videos, I think a lot of these problems will be no-brainers, but uh, bear with me here. Let's continue on to problem number two. If the sum of 5, 8, 12, and 15 is equal to the sum of 3, 4, x, and x plus 3, what is the value of x? They're saying that the sum of 5, 8, 12, and 15, and whenever they say sum, I start adding together the numbers, so uh, make that a habit of yours. They're saying that that is equal to the sum of 3 and 4 and x and x plus 3. They're saying that these two sides are equal, and they're trying to figure out what x equals. Now, uh, this is pretty easy. You just have to take the numbers uh, and you get them on one side and you leave the x's on the other side and then you divide. So in this case, uh, what you want to do first is actually add together these numbers on the left. You got a 5 here, you got a 15 here, you add those together, you can get a 20. You got an 8 and a 12, uh, add those together and you get another 20. 20 plus 20, you get 40 on the left. 3, a 4, and a 3. 2 threes is a 6 plus a 4, that's a 10 plus two x's together, that's two x. Subtract 10 from both sides and you get 30 on the left and two x on the right. Divide both sides by two and you get x equals 15. And 15 is answer B. Boom, another question solved. All right, moving on, making good time here. Number three, for which of the following values of n is 100 plus n over n, not an integer. Quick review, what's an integer? Well, an integer is any number that is uh, not a fraction or a decimal. So any whole number, at least that's how the, how the GMAT sees it. So uh, a lot of times when you get questions like this and the answer choices look something like one, two, three, four, five. They're very simple numbers. Uh, just take the answer choices and plug them into the question, and it's a, the fastest way that you'll have to, to solve uh, this problem. Uh, for people who have seen a lot of these problems, you'll probably eliminate A, B, and E immediately. 
And uh, let me explain why for those who don't understand why I just did that. One, n is on the bottom. Anything over one, uh, 100 plus 1 would be 101. If that's over 1, that's definitely an integer. So as you see more and more of these problems, a lot of these these uh, these tricks will just, you know, come second nature to you. So 100 plus 1 over 1, that would just be 101, and that's definitely an integer. So uh, it's not our answer. Same with 2. You know, you got 100, you add it to 2, you get 102, and that's an even number. Any even number can be divided by 2 and would be an integer. So that's why it's not 2. So 100 plus 2 over 2, that would be 102 over 2, and that would be 51. There you go. And 5, 5 is kind of the same. You know, you got 100 and here plus 5 over 5. What you end up having is 105 over 5. And you know any number that ends with a 5 or a 0 can be divided by 5. So this is definitely not our answer. It comes down to, to C and D. Let's do D first. 100 plus 4 over 4. You got 104 over 4. And you do a little division. 2 times 4, that's an 8. That's a 24. So that's 6. And that is an integer. So by process of elimination, we know that C is the correct answer. All right. Moving on. Let's do question 4. Rectangular floors, X and Y. I'm going to try to draw some rectangles, but don't laugh if they don't look very straight. Ah, yeah, you know, these, this tablet that I use here, it, it, eh. well, there you go. That's a rectangle number one. There's rectangle number two here. I'll, I'll shade the side of it so that it, it has kind of a 3D shape here. All right, rectangle, rectangular floors, X and Y, have equal area. So the problem is telling us that the areas are equal. Now, who remembers what, uh, how do you calculate the area? You got your length here and you got your width here. Length times width, LW equals area. So what they're saying is that this here and this here multiply together to get the same number as if you multiply this, or this side here to this side here. All right, let's see what else they give us. If floor X is 12 feet by 18 feet, all right, so let's forget this L and W here. They're saying that this is 12 feet by 18 feet, and floor Y is 9 feet by the, well, I think that's actually what we're looking for. They say, what is the length of floor Y? So let's call this the length. They're asking, what is this? Well, we want to find the area first of rectangle X, so that would be 12 times 18. 2 times 8, 16. 8 times 1 plus 1, oh, 9. 12 times 1, that's 12. 9, oops, let me uh, bring this down a little bit. All right, 6, 9 plus 2, 11, and you get 216. Bring this back up. Now what, they're, what this is telling us is that the area of X is 216. Now whatever these two sides are, they have to multiply together to get 216. So 9 times L equals 216. We just divide 9 from both sides, and those 9s cancel out, and you get... L equals, uh, let's see what this becomes, 9, 2, 16, 18, 36, 4. So you get L equals 24. And that is answer E. Boom! And uh, that is the end of the fourth problem. I will continue this in the next video. See you soon.